is a, a workshop with an institute that's also based here. But you, you work with different topics, uh, from public health to economic development to the line of civil services. And you can have more information on the website, both in our activities as well as uh, the activities of the other institutes. So now, starting the, the discussions I just mentioned, I don't know how many of you attended this, uh, the UN World Conference on, on Disaster Risk Reduction, and that was in, in March this year in Sendai. Anyone who was there? No? Yeah, one? Yeah, two? Yeah, a few people were there. But this is a, is a major conference that happens every two years, uh, uh, every, uh, sorry, every four years. Uh, that discuss uh, how you create frameworks to reduce risk, uh, 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 particularly uh, related to natural disaster. This was uh, exactly the same night because we had the, the, the large uh, tree disaster, uh, tsunami earthquake, nuclear disaster in that region. But uh, the main document that came out is this uh, now the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. And this uh, framework has uh, several uh, targets, global targets. Uh, I just mentioned some of them here. Uh, but the idea is to reduce, and manage, and try to cope with uh, 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 disaster, large scale disaster, that could be natural disaster or human made uh, disaster. An important point for, for our discussion here is uh, uh, the role of stakeholders. There is uh, in this uh, framework that was the main outcome of this conference, uh, the Sendai framework for disaster risk production, is the idea of incorporate more the other stakeholders beyond government uh, in this process of uh, reduce uh, uh, risks. You know? And then you say, as I just quoted, civil society volunteers organizing voluntary work organizations, community organizations to invite them to participate and collaborate with public institutions to uh, provide specific knowledge and prag pragmatic guidance in the context of the development and implementation of normative framework standards, plans for disaster risk reduction, engage in implementation of local, national, regional, and global plan strategy, and contribute to support uh, uh, to support uh, public awareness, uh, cultural prevention, educational risk reduction, and advocate for resilient community and all inclusive and all society disaster risk management with its strength uh, and synergy across group as appropriate. It means that uh, this is uh, new in these uh, discussions because before the previous uh, uh, conference, the large conference, pretty much about government, government action, great risk management, risk management plan different level, but this is explicitly now recognized that actually you cannot uh, uh, re uh, manage risk without other stakeholders, particularly uh, the civil society uh, related uh, stakeholders. Now, this is very clear that this is important for this meeting and how we can actually engage with a more legal international law that help us to, to incorporate some of the discussions we have here to have more meetings to discuss. Uh, and within this framework, the one thing that we've been uh, uh, working uh, in the last uh, three years is the idea of moving uh, from uh, the idea of risk management, that I would say is more, more technical, I would say, to the idea of risk governance. How to govern the risks. And in the previous slide, the incorporation of civil society exactly in these uh, uh, contexts. You know, how you actually have in participation, that's in the middle, the arrow in the middle, to make this, this leap between the technical part of say, risk management to more like uh, the governance part that uh, through participation govern the process of the, the, the technical outcomes to have a, a real impact in society. Because a lot of time you have to have all these plans very technical, a lot of very good work, expensive, but in the end it has very little impact on the ground exactly because you don't have the links between uh, what's in the paper and what is in the society. And the idea 
that the government can help is true, but if you don't have the engagement of different stakeholders, uh, it's, it's more difficult to, to get this uh, 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 with the results. That That's why the idea of moving to management and governance, uh, we think that can have. Uh, and the idea of risk governance is, is, is said beyond risk of, uh, management. In the corporate of uh, 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 other uh, points that we think that's also important in the process, that discussing the risks and uh, incorporate local knowledge in the discussion and the technical discussion, as well as how to translate the technical discussion into something that people can understand and, and can actually manage themselves. Uh, 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 and, and this requires a lot of interaction between human and natural system. Uh, with high intensity, as you know, it's very difficult to predict, predict uh, earthquakes. We just saw in Nepal, uh, 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 and something it could be there. I was in Bhutan at that time and feel the earthquake. Uh, 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 and it's really, you know, uh, and some people was in my hotel. They're planning to go to, to Nepal just after that. Uh, it means not only the the, the uh, local people can be affected, but a lot of people who are traveling who are working can be uh, uh, also uh, impacted in the, uh, by the, those, those disasters. And it, it's a lot of degree of uh, high uncertainty. Also, uh, another important interaction, and I think it's most important for our discussions, is what called the social interaction, the human interaction among people. Uh, you know, there is the interaction between us and natural system, the social system and natural system that's important to, to, to how to manage and govern risks, but also the, the interaction among individuals. And this is, is actually, if you look at the literature of risk uh, risk management, is a really uh, a marginal, uh, 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 I would say, work done in this area, how to actually get uh, people involved and interact among themselves <coughs> in the development of the risks in the discussion. Uh, and this is important now, particularly if you expect uh, uh, large uh, 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 natural change because of climate change, uh, and also a large societal change. As I said the world now is getting more urbanized, and the way you live, the way we live in the city is very different from the way we live in the rural areas, and how the implications of these, this natural environment you now, that people use to interact in the rural areas, but now most of people live in the cities, very different environment. I would say this is also environmental change and how you, you actually manage, manage the human, you have to change the human natural interaction, but as well as the social interaction because of those changes. And most of the discussions are said and uh, recognized by the framework, what called the stakeholder basis. It means you need uh, uh, a lot of the, 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 the social interactions, as I mentioned, the, between different groups of people. Uh, what you call stakeholders, uh, uh, and also when you talk about government, uh, not only the national government, but there are different levels of government, uh, uh, global, uh, uh, there's not national government, there is some uh, governance at the global level, but as well as uh, regional and local level, and how we actually get all these, these stakeholders together. Also is multi sector, it means in order to govern risk, it's not only get one sector, not only the, the disaster management ministries as some countries have, but how to involve the other sectors, uh, uh, you know, health, uh, urban uh, development, education, and so on. And this is really uh, very complex in terms of uh, that basically everyone has to be to, to involve how we get this process uh, done. And the, the idea of participation is actually how to get these different stakeholders together to have a good governance. And, and, and then the, the idea of participation is very in key time. Uh, and in terms of land use information that shape land use to decide what you're going to do in a certain area, or building, or, or, or agriculture, or other kinds of economic activities. And also, but at the same time, has the, the end in itself. A lot of people think, you know, participation is very help us to do things, get information that otherwise would be difficult to get, but at the same time, in terms of the legitimacy, the ending, a lot of people, there's important participation, 
because what gives legitimacy to uh, uh, in terms of the process of the permit. Uh, uh, and uh, what you see in the literature uh, is a very, uh, I would say, lack of understanding of empirical research on how participation of local artists can factually affect public intervention. Everything thinks is good, but when I'm, uh, I'm going to show you the example of when you look at the practice of participation is very different from what happened in theory. And, and ever assume that more participation is better. But on the other hand, participation also implies a lot of costs, uh, both in terms of resources. You have to get people together, discuss, facilitate these discussions, but as, as well as uh, cost time. A lot of time you have to do things. Certain time frame and you need participation is going to delay things and, uh, uh, and the idea that actually basis is trade off. And, 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 and I understand what I'm trying to, to, to discuss here with you using the case of Tohoku uh, is like how we close these gaps in government, how the best way you have participation that is going to influence the process and then we try to use the, the case of Tohoku to analyze what happened before, particularly before the disaster that actually led to the consequences you've seen today in order to prevent that in the future uh, you have the same problems in the idea that we will be able to close those gaps. And I'll give you uh, some recommendations or ways you think that you could uh, close those gaps. As you may not you know, I'm not going into detail, but there was Tohoku. Uh, uh, I just pinpoint uh, not details about how many people die or displays. I think uh, many of you uh, are aware of these. But uh, the first thing is interesting to study Tohoku because I think Japan uh, is maybe the best prepared country in the world to deal with natural disaster. Uh, as far as I know, I, I know many countries, uh, maybe some countries I know, but Japan I think, is the best prepared. And but still, with the, all the hardware, all the software, all the training, even here in even New Hell, a couple of weeks ago, had the, the drill went outside, you have periodically all the software and hardware, but still disaster like the one we had in Tohoku can happen. And it's interesting as that as it happened in Nepal, okay, okay, Nepal is a poor country, they don't have the they don't have the money, it just happened, um, I'm sorry, but in case of Japan, it's interesting exactly because here is, I think, the best country in the world in terms of preparedness for, for natural disaster. Uh, also, uh, uh, in terms of participation, if you include Japan, uh, some Japanese actually disagree, but uh, uh, Japan is one country with a strong uh, culture of participation, local and community based, from recycling to decide which flower you put in the garden in the community, you get a strong sense of participation. And I would say in the Asian countries, maybe it's the country where have a strong sense of participation. I don't know any other country uh, in Asia where you have these uh, 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 strong links between the people on the ground and how they decide things and the links to the government uh, through participation. Uh, 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 and the public participation has been introduced in many different laws in Japan from environmental impact assessment law of 1997 to now recently to the participation to the operation and location of nuclear power plants after the disaster go to mention. But Japan is a country that has a strong, uh, I would say, culture of participation and is institutionalized also in the government. This is why is it, I think the case is very interesting as a research, exactly because you have a strong country in terms of preparedness for natural health, software and hardware, uh, strong education, and strong culture of participation. Uh, uh, but then why? How this happened in Tohoku? Even in the best country in the world, I'll say, in terms of natural disaster management and in Asia in terms of participation. And what lessons you can learn? And try to point out some of these points here. And the last one, uh, the first point is uh, uh, 
Mm. I think one of the reasons Japan is so well prepared for disaster, because this disaster, as many of you know, have happened for many centuries, many millennia. Mm -hmm. that uh, I visit some of these uh, tsunami uh, storms around Japan and, and there are many of these sites that you know don't build beyond this point this storm and then this was a culture resist that <coughs> Japan uh, doing for many many centuries before GI GIS uh, uh, and, you know satellites all this technology people actually will base all the preparedness on the local knowledge. In Japan, if you go around to Hoku, you find a lot of stories, and a lot of proper to old people uh, about this culture of the, the, the local knowledge uh, uh, to help to prevent disaster. But how actually uh, this knowledge was lost in participation, say, uh, uh, in, in Japan, and why people, when saw these stones, don't build below this point, they just build there, and then, you know, what, what happened uh, uh, later. And this is, see, okay, it's a big earthquake, but you look historically, uh, what called Renard Hans, you know, when it comes to the wave, you had uh, many earthquakes, uh, even higher than, uh, in terms of Renard, even higher than this earthquake. Uh, if you look at this, a different uh, from a uh, Chinese corporation, uh, you have many, many uh, different uh, earthquakes. Just to give you uh, in Miyako, where you're going to example, I'm show you was uh, in, uh, you have earthquakes of uh, this time 35 meters, but in Yofunato, in 1896, was 38 meters of runoff. So it means this kind of disaster in Japan happens every 50 years, every 100 years, but you have, it was not the largest disaster ever. Maybe you have a lot of internet report now, but uh, you have also other disasters before of the same magnitude. And why this moment was, was not included. Uh, and and I, I, I saw a lot of this knowledge when I visit and talk to people. Uh, they kind of forgot in the reconstruction with the town. Exactly. Uh, as we're going to see, the, 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 because you, you, people, this misperception now we have better technology, you learn from the previous disaster, and now we have more all these uh, uh, techniques that you can prevent disaster, reduce disaster, build the walls, uh, and then you'll be better prepared. You don't need that kind of this local knowledge. I think this process of rebuilding. Uh, people forgot a lot of this knowledge exactly because it's a trade-off between the knowledge that they knew from the experience for hundreds, hundred millennia uh, uh, to the new technology that they used to, to do this. And then I mean this uh, call is, was lost in participation. And we can do an example, this is a city uh, town of visit, Aneyoshi, I don't know if you remember, know, uh, is in Omoe Peninsula in Iwate. They have Actually, there was the largest runoff in this earthquake. The runoff of the tsunami was the highest in the whole coast. Uh, however, uh, no one died there, exactly because they, no one built below that stone. Uh, uh, it was a few cases where local town where no one died, exactly because they, they used the knowledge they had. And a lot of people uh, uh, said that, you know, they taught all the time by their ancestor, their grandfather, their grandfather, about the, the big earthquake in 1896. Uh, and that's why they, 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 they had a result of this, is even though the height was around 38 meters, the largest of uh, runoff uh, you know, on the coast during the, this, this earthquake. Uh, in tsunami, but no one, no one died. This is just an example how to bring this knowledge to practice, and now not make only the direct trade-off with the technical approach. Uh, uh, Another lesson uh, got the three lessons: improved participation to corporate existing scientific information decision making. Japan, as I mentioned, is very well prepared. How to software, a lot of analysis, studies, whatever you go, they are full of data. It's good about doing this research. Uh, particularly if you know a little bit of Japanese, all the information is there. You know, you don't need to get this, all kinds of information. It's very well uh, formed. But, but it's still this over-reliance on this technical information about the, the idea of infrastructure is going to be help us. 
But in the discussions, there was very little participation to use some of the technical information that are available to define the plants. i just give you probably some of you know about the, the Fukushima uh, disaster. Uh, I don't know how it was the, the, the height of the wall, but showing the previous tsunamis, or at least one, every 100 years we're going to have a tsunami higher than the wall. For example, you had the technical information telling you, you know, every 50 years, 100 years, we have a tsunami a wave more 25 years when you build the wall less than 25, uh, 25 meters, you know. And, and the idea leads you to what's called the safe development paragraph. They will leave to the technical people they decide. Uh, but what you see uh, in a lot of settlements as well, uh, in this case, uh, uh, in San Nico as well, this is some of the uh, show in, in, in yellow and, 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 and pink and the previous tsunamis for the Chilean tsunami and another how much if you have one tsunami that scale how much uh, 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 flood you have but anyway people build in that thing because they build the wall they will be better prepared and uh, what I learned a very little participation people would decide about the prefecture and about the city and people were not very much involved, or they didn't understand much of the discussions when you had this. When you had the technical information, the studies uh, tell you that there's a high risk that 50 years we have very large. Let me go over uh, what we're planning, but there was not actually effective participation to make this technical information uh, introduced uh, in the in the class, you know, when people just build the things that they knew that every 50 years this thing would be in the, even the, the power plant. And, 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 and the third lesson is improved to sparse in public participation, part of the representation important decision making about the risk. And this is one thing Japan has done since 2011. Uh, it, it strength the decision about the, the nuclear power plant. As I said, Japan has a strong culture of participation, what cycling with flower and plant in the garden, but when you build a, a nuclear power plant, no one can see. You just come and build a nuclear power plant and move people. You need to have a strong culture of participation, but sometimes not the participation things that matter, uh, things that are important. I mean, you just participate in the flower and plant or, or the color of the house, but you really the important decision. In Japan, through the mage area, I just heard today that the, a lot of industries in the major area era uh, is going to be UNESCO heritage site. I was reading in Japan Times today. Uh, I mean, the development uh, uh, scale in Japan in the last 100 years, uh, particularly the first half of the century was massive. Uh, you know, large scale industrial complex being put next to the communities and very little say about uh, uh, what happened. Except when you start having problems, you have all the diseases, Minamata, Taita, Yokaruchi, and then you have participation. People press, particularly through uh, uh, local organizations, to make change. But very little participation to avoid the problems that happened in the first place. In Japan, this is a cultural participation, but still more transparency on how decisions are made about big things. Uh, uh, and I see now for the group movement in Japan, I guess reclamation. In other countries, reclamation is very, very difficult. You know, we claim some many Japanese Japanese that just go and build an island, an airport, something, and we don't see it. But, but I still now see a growing concern. Also, we got garbage incinerators and landfills, things that Japan didn't have in the past, exactly because it was not institutionalized the participation, but more and more now we see open and particularly because of the, the, the what happened two years ago about uh, quick, more and more institutionalized this uh, cultural participation things that matter. These are the three main lessons I got. And I got uh, uh, now a few recommendations. Uh, the first is the strength, the political process in the area that matter. Uh, the, the issues uh, you have done, seeing that in the last two, three years this have happened. This uh, process has proved, particularly nuclear issues now, it's not that uh, easy now to build a nuclear power plant or create a north power plant without local government, the local population to agree. But still, uh, you need to increase this participation, keep the momentum, because now people still 
feel uh, what happened four years ago, but maybe the next generation, maybe in 10 years, people really don't met, don't care again, and you start again uh, new risks coming, and how to actually keep this political process of participation alive. Uh, I even some people told me last four years has declined a little bit. You know, a lot of uh, people just thought, now I'll take care of my own lives, and then it's, it's, it's coming again. Uh, the problems in, in risk governance we saw before, how to actually keep the pro political process strained uh, in terms of participation to avoid and go back to what you have. Uh, the better link between science and politics, as I said, Japan is full of studies and research, but very little of these are used in, in politics. And there are problems related to knowledge, uh, the scientific knowledge, that how to people understand this knowledge, you know, people that are not nuclear engineers or, or ph uh, physicists, they, they understand the problems of nuclear energy, translate these in a language that they can use in, in, in their dialogues in order to, to use a uh, uh, policy. The third, a uh, strange social organization. What happened in Japan, as I said, a strong culture of public participation, particularly at the neighborhood level. <coughs> But lacks large national level organizations uh, uh, for NGOs. You get in big environmental NGOs in Japan, my area, very few. You have a lot of local level organizations, but the large NGOs in Japan, like Greenpeace, uh, WWF, Organ Foreign International Organization, with branches in Japan, but you don't have uh, strong networks. Uh, and then how to build those social organizations. At the same time, get the independent from the government. A lot of our but they're funded by government, and they said in the end, it's basically just branch of the government. They're actually not independent. How to strain uh, uh, and, and keep uh, those organizations uh, functioning. Uh, and I think that's it. To your organizations, just to conclude, uh, it's still, you, you, the technology you can approach to risk manage prevails. The, I think this uh, Sendai conference is the first big step internationally to have other stakeholders have the same weight in decisions about risk as the technical people, but it's still a high degree of, uh, for the problems we saw here, uh, both in terms of resources, uh, like organization, but as well as to understand this technology to be able to discuss head to head with an uh, engineer, nuclear engineer, about the location or the height of a wall in a nuclear power plant. Uh, also, uh, challenging uh, this incorporated local knowledge, how actually keep not only the write about the local knowledge and have a book, but keep this local knowledge alive and also interact with social process that you can keep them alive and influence the decisions about for example, land use planning or about siting of uh, large uh, nuclear power plants. Also we have issues about elder population, Japan now is a big transition. Uh, you have older people, and the issues are very different. The interests of older people, the interests of local people. I, I heard that nuclear energy, for example, uh, in general, young people are more interested and aware. The old people, the old people I'm going to die, have 85 years old. You know, can, I can even enter. I remember interesting when they have nuclear power plant or the association of engineers, former engineers of Fukushima. People over 70 years old, they volunteer themselves to enter the machine because no one wrote to buy nine, five years, ten years ago. Is how actually uh, incorporate these uh, elder population. The risk is very different. You know? uh, uh, what else? Uh, improvements in your regional framework you have, uh, but still how to strengthen the, the power of our uh, I think that's much more open. To participation many of the process in Japan, but still lacks maybe those organizations, the strength of the organization, for example, to uh, have the same power uh, in the discussion as the governments, and same power as scientific organization, but you don't have the third the social civil society is still very weak. I think we need to strengthen uh, uh, those organizations to have a good balance in the discussion. 
can be good for the community, but very good for government as well. As uh, a government, we have a check on things they are doing. Uh, and this is, this is a dream. Anyway, uh, Rota just came out, uh, uh, I mean, land use policy, a little bit about, I discussed here in English, if you're interested, I uh, uh, can send you by email the, the article. That is, is a bit things we discuss here, but more concerned the land use discussions. Okay, thank you very much. And then I'm not just, uh, Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Papu de Oliveira. Um, if you have a question, uh, uh, no, <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, because of the, uh, the translation, please use the mic very closely, the, you and both of you. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Hi. 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 Um, and one of the questions that always comes up, you know, from my students to me is, these participatory models are really great, but power issues tend to come into play often. Uh, that makes it very difficult for people with less power to be able to get their point of view across, to be able to actually effectively participate in the decision making and so forth. And I listened to your presentation today, and it sounds great, but it doesn't really work. You know, the way you describe it. Well, uh, this is a, uh, one discussion about uh, participation I mentioned in the beginning that uh, can be very important but also very costly if it's not very effectively. A, a lot of times we'll see a lot of participatory process, bring people together but the, the decision already made, they just put that thing in like a circle and people will discuss but they never read the decision. And the next degree is exactly how main participation matters. Uh, and this is uh, actually the topic of this question, how to close those gaps. And you need to have, uh, first, I think, uh, political change in terms of institutionalize all of this process. That first step is before any decision, you need to have certain participation, even if sometimes the decision is made, but you can change things through participation. A lot of times government they no other decision, they open the participation, but it's more consultative, just consulting, but sometimes make a difference. Up to the level where actually we fully institutionalized the decision should have the approval of the local communities. And you see now this happened with the nuclear power plant. The nuclear power plant in Port, 2011, very little local participation, is more technical, government and bureaucrats decided than maybe some local government now is very difficult. Participation is very important if you want to have a say about a uh, nuclear power plant. Uh, now it's much more uh, important than it was in the past. Now it matters much more than ever. But the thing is different degrees. And, and participation also could be a, a mean to get more political power. If you create a movement, but just you say is one thing, but you have a local group that's I interested in the topic in press, local level, but you have a Japan-wide organization. I represent you know, 60,000 people and the politicians will start listening more to you and have more political power, even if it's not institutionalized. And then it, it, this is, uh, 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 they will have to build uh, participation uh, sometimes from scratch. That's what's happened with the nuclear power in Japan. was very fragmented, I think, after uh, 2011, uh, you create a lot of those groups locally, but still need much more strength to be, uh, uh, make a difference nationally. You know, the national uh, discussions is still, as I said, all these organizations local, but they are not very well connected. But it's, it's true that power is uh, important. Someone I'm just curious, you haven't mentioned the media, and it seems that media in this model is, is a real bottleneck in terms of uh, the, the amount of participation, the control of that participation, the level of education, and 
Yeah, this is true. Uh, uh, media communication in general uh, is very important to to bound the, the participation in order to have a larger effect. In this case, I didn't talk much about media because it was more uh, uh, local participation in, in this research about land use planning. Uh, there are some role of local media, but media, if you look at more large scale movements, the media is very important to make the creative power. I said, if you just say about yourself, to say the media is very different than the, the appear your Yomiyubishi moon first page that what what happened. And I think this is a, also an under-researched topic, I would say, in, 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 in this area. But to me, this is important. So I didn't mention because this was not uh, particularly relevant for, for this the research. Okay. Uh, I'm very impressed uh, with your presentation because I keep on uh, studying uh, your domain uh, for long years. So then one question only, how do you think the uh, role of researchers who participate in governance by uh, general public? Okay. I, I think that uh, researcher uh, can have many roles. Uh, what are the roles, for example, I see that needs uh, in Japan? Exactly, I mentioned a couple of times the bridge between scientific knowledge and, and, and local knowledge. Uh, because people, uh, if you go to talk to your grandmother about nuclear power plant, maybe she has no clue. Uh, you know, if in order to her to participate and make some uh, relevant contribution to decisions in her area, she needs to know more about what is nuclear power plant, what is the implication of what a nuclear power plant there. Both in terms, uh, if not, uh, uh, these, the, the participation may not happen, or may have a very ineffectively with conflicts. You know, people say one thing, or say another thing. Is I think there are a lot of role for the researchers to bridge this gap between the technical information and obviously the participatory dynamics of the people that are not technical, how to make this read. I just uh, give you an example. Uh, there is one thing that's called joint fact finding. For example, we want to have groups that conflict about certain information. I get one researcher independent to actually research about that topic and create information that both of them use, find that that is a reliable uh, information uh, for decision, instead of have each group, for example, find their own information, uh, and then they have never agreed, because since the beginning they start with the different information. But I think there are a lot of rules. Also, things you're going to discuss here in the social science, uh, the strength participatory process to be more effective, uh, both in terms of uh, 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 this understanding the scientific information, but give inputs, power, uh, view participatory process that have power to influence better the decisions. Uh, uh, these also a lot of, uh, I would say, not very uh, that much research, empirical research. There are a lot of training about participatory, but not like what really can make a difference. Uh, uh, in terms of the movement, participatory movement to make uh, uh, a difference in the decisions. You know, but this is uh, also social science. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. We have two. Let's let's ask both our questions before you uh, reply. In fact, my comment is from a. Uh, I'm joining in people from around the world on Skype. And so a comment from Ramesh uh, Kanal, who's a, a Nepalese, uh, in the work in Nepal uh, relating to the first question. Um, he said many people are not educated about natural disaster and so religiously they believe it's God's will to punish them because they're not performing the correct rituals. Uh, so in their work, they're trying to explain that the 
earthquake or tsunami doesn't come to harm us on purpose. It's actually made worse because of the man-made structures are not uh, up to the standard that they should be. Um, I pass it to Professor Takashi. Uh, in general, I understand this uh, principle, but thinking of our own uh, case, like uh, uh, you might have an original country. Even I'm Japanese, I have an original town where I'm born. In order to apply this principle, we have to really deeply understand our ancestral cultures base and also uh, kind of family roots. Otherwise, generally we understand though, like as, asking that the uh, name of the parents, grandparents, great grandparents, what kind of culture they have, how we made it apply. As a researcher, we may generally inf maybe to inform to the public though. We have to, uh, I understand that as a researcher, we have to write who you are, own culture, origin you came from. First, uh, answer uh, the question from recording from the powders in the internet. Uh, 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 yes, uh, there are a lot of uh, issues related, uh, for example, to lack of uh, good standards. All they have the standards when they didn't do the, 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 the right standards and in the power, and they have all, all the problems. This is an issue, of, I would say, of uh, participation. Exactly, because a lot of those standards, uh, uh, in some countries, they are designed through uh, hearings to the public. And if you don't have strong uh, low participation, that people really push for high standards in the buildings, or if you don't have a technical group in the government more like independent, they can push these, the other agents to strengthen the buildings uh, by standards, you may have uh, the problems uh, that you see uh, uh, in the power in Japan, for example, is very uh, well regulated, I would say, uh, in the buildings. Uh, the standards in India are checked periodically, uh, uh, the, the standards of the buildings is why, and this is pretty much to do about many countries, Philippines and Nepal, I know that a lot of uh, the people who build the, the structures, even buildings, they are not, I would say, technically qualified to understand the standards. I mean, they just build, uh, but I know in Japan, all the people who build houses and buildings, they, they are certified and they have to understand the standards and build according to those standards. If not, they face uh, uh, some, could be prosecutor or they can lose their license to build. And that's why in these, uh, uh, some countries they have uh, Problems. Uh, and other issue, I think, in Nepal, I many of these countries, what happened is the culture of self built. A lot of people build their own house and they don't have the, the, the knowledge. It's not, and they, even if they have the knowledge, maybe they don't have the, the money to, to build uh, in the standards that uh, are, are, can, uh, 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 I would say, uh, resist of which like the one hand. Or maybe the building that uh, would go to cost like three times more than the normal price and they just decide to build themselves. Uh, uh, that one issue is, we could discuss later, but there are a lot of issues related to the The other, the gentleman uh, who asked the question about, uh, uh, what I try to, to get exactly to get lessons from people that could be applied to, to other countries. See, the, the three lessons I wrote here, they are very general. They are not specific to Tohoku. I just identify those gaps in Tohoku, which also happened in, in many other countries, the, the, the lack of incorporation of uh, local knowledge in decision making, the lack of use, best use of technical knowledge in the local decision making, as well as issues about the relevance of the participation for, uh, for the large scale uh, construction. In many countries, I would say in Asia, most of the countries are well behind Japan in participation. I mean, a lot of issues that are found here, they also not apply to other countries. I know they went from China. China is one of them, like, where local participation is very limited inside about a highway or or a big factory or a dam that remove a million people from their land. It's still very, I would say, well behind Japan. 
can have some glasses to water them so it's not dependent on the people. Okay. I think that's uh, also right now for time. The time can also be around when we discuss uh, uh, in your meeting.